It's perilous. It's exciting. It could all go wrong. And they've never seen anything like it in Saudi Arabia. The religious police checked that the costumes weren't too risque. The Minister of Entertainment lost his job because the women in the Russian circus were too scantily clad. But this one has its license to thrill the crowd. A sign of change in the kingdom. It's changing and I hope that everybody is benefit this changing with respecting our religion first of all, sure. Even 10-year-olds know there's something going on. Not everyone is happy. The most conservative voices have been silenced. But even clerics who've accepted women driving worry about how far this will go. The people may change, but not the principles. Those who hold on to their Islamic values will triumph in the end. Any woman who defies the principles of Islam will be answerable to God. Scholars agree that the religion does not allow a woman to go out showing more than her hands and face. 32-year-old Crown Prince Mohammed and his father King Salman watch over everything. They've curbed the power of conservative clerics, but also moved against those campaigning for more reform. The change there's been in Saudi Arabia has all been ordered by the crown prince and the king. Yes, they have given women more freedom. Apart from those who've been denied their liberty completely, women's activists, human rights campaigners who've been arrested, including another one in the last few days. Because social reform does not mean political freedom. This is still an absolute monarchy. Innovation and high-tech manufacturing, that's modernization here, not democracy. At Centres for Science and Technology, they're doing research to help the kingdom diversify from oil. Social change springs from economic need. They can't afford to discount half the population. They need engineers and generals, whether it was a male or a female. I feel lucky because I think I graduated in the right time where they needed female engineers like their uh, the kingdom is in uh, uh, in the stage where they want to empower women so they were looking for women with very different backgrounds and one of them is engineering but this is also a land of heat and dust of camels and sheep and a way of life that goes back centuries the saudi royal family has kept power by balancing different interests and groups they can't disregard the Bedouin and rural Saudis who are suspicious of newfangled ideas and Western ways. I'm only half an hour's drive from the glitzy shopping malls of Riyadh, but it feels like another country. No one here is going to say that they disagree with the changes that the Crown Prince and the King have brought in. But while young cosmopolitan people in the cities are desperate for change, here their whole sense of self is rooted in tradition, in Islam, things that they say will never change. For many, this is the real Saudi Arabia. They'll do what the government orders, they say, but anything new must be within strict limits. Nothing will really change because our life is guided by Islam, which is very clear and honest. We'll never betray our Islamic principles. So is this a step too far for traditionalists? Young musicians in Riyadh are free to perform or jam together now. But a few years ago, many Saudis would have frowned on them, or worse. If I have a a guitar with me in the street, someone would maybe come to me and they would break it. But if easy. you wanted to play a jam session, what did you do? Uh, we would uh, gather and uh, play a jam session, but not in public. We can't just, like, I, I would put my guitar in the, in the car, but I, I will try not anyone see me. Now it's not the boys in the band, 
but the most conservative clerics watching their words. Definitely there is a little tension, and the state faces some risk. They're building something new, going in a new direction, and everyone has to understand that. It's like a war between the old ways and new ideas. If they're going to finish what they've started, certain people may have to remain silent for a while. Those who tread the tightrope often falter. Some Saudis say the government should go faster, others that it should stop, go back. There is real change here, but no guarantee of stability or success. It was a Roman satirist who talked of distracting the population from their political rights with bread and circuses. Well, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, he knows that young Saudis, and he's in his early 30s, 60% of the population is younger than him. They need jobs and they want entertainment. They want the kind of life that they've seen on the television. So he's very popular with them. But people are saying that in the next six months, he has to really sort out his power base because previous rulers have carefully balanced the business elite, the clerics and other members of the royal family. He hasn't done that. He's gone for all of them. Locking up businessmen, he says, are corrupt, silencing the clerics, annoying other members of the royal family. At the same time, he's picked a fight with his neighbor Qatar. He's got involved in the war in Yemen. He's belligerent about the regional rival Iran. He's decided to have rapprochement with Israel. All of this is creating a huge turbulence in the region. And it may be very difficult for him to consolidate his position here in Saudi Arabia and bring real reform unless he starts to bring some of the power elites along with him too.